I'm Aaron Rutten, a professional digital artist and art instructor, and today I'll be taking an in-depth look at ArtRage. I've scored this app based on what I feel is important in digital art software. I'm looking at brush variety, natural media simulation, ease of use, and other important factors. And I'm only counting default content, not add-ons. Released in 2004, ArtRage has been around for over 17 years. It was one of the earliest art apps to break the mold and create a highly graphical UI that is based around the traditional media aesthetic. It was also one of the first apps to have realistic color blending and a decent simulation of impasto or paint thickness. I'm reviewing ArtRage Vitae, which is also ArtRage version 7. Let's score ArtRage. Let's start with the brushes. The overall variety of default brushes in ArtRage is okay. Compared to other art apps, the number of variants in each category is limited. You can customize the brushes in ArtRage, I'd say the selection of properties is pretty good. The organic media effects used to look pretty good, but they have fallen behind a lot. I'd say they are okay. There are some nice blenders with transparency blending, but unfortunately they only support outward blending. If you try to blend from the canvas toward the edge of the paint, it does not behave naturally. There are a few various soft edge and speckled airbrushes, and even proper airbrushes with properties that allow you to change the angle of the paint spray. The ink brushes are fairly basic, a bit too optimized for drawing on mobile. There are some basic texture brushes, but you'd probably want to expand on that by creating some custom brushes to cover more of a variety of textures. There aren't any particle brushes in our age. There are some fantastic stamp brushes that can create multiple stamps. Although I'd say the impasto brushes in our age are good for the most part, I've seen better. They do give you control over the paint thickness and the paint depth smudges around in a very realistic way. Plus, there's a distinct lumpiness to the paint when you use the knife blender. It feels like you are smudging around real paint rather than applying pixels with stamps. ArtRage really changed my perception of how I could make art on a computer when I discovered it years ago. I really think the impasto in ArtRage has some potential, but the rest of the app is holding it back. Next, the watercolor brushes are okay. They do seem to have some sort of fluid dynamics, or perhaps pseudo-fluid dynamics. Rather than overlapping strokes, the paint on the brush interacts with the wet paint on the canvas. While it's not bad, you can find better watercolor out there. I'm not impressed by the pencil brushes either. They do support tilt, but they just don't feel that great, and there aren't a lot of them. The dual brush property is supported for the custom brush. And if you're wondering if there is a GPU acceleration option, the answer is no. Moving on to brush performance. Unlike any of the other art apps I've tried, you can use graphics of the actual tools as your cursor. The graphics even animate, for instance, the bristles of the oil brush bend when you press it against the canvas. While this looks cool, it's really not useful or necessary. The max brush size in ArtRage is okay at only 500 pixels. Some brushes may be smaller than that. There are some good brush resizing shortcuts. You can even hold shift and drag to resize the brush on the screen. ArtRage offers some brush stabilization properties. There isn't a dedicated anti-aliasing property, but you can adjust the hardness with a slider. I wasn't able to locate any sort of brush calibration in ArtRage. That's pretty uncommon. Here's where we explore the transformation features. The transformation tools in ArtRage are good. You can transform multiple layers, but you have to group them first, an unnecessary step in my opinion. While there aren't any distortion brushes, you can apply a warp filter. ArtRage is one of those apps without a mesh warp tool. How about layers in ArtRage? The layer support is good. There are plenty of blend modes. And you can lock transparent pixels. Masking in ArtRage isn't so hot. This is one of those apps that makes you jump through hoops in order to make masking feel more traditional. In the case of ArtRage, you have to use stencils. There are collapse layer options. And there is a clear layer shortcut, but you have to enable the custom shortcut yourself. Saving is next. ArtRage will allow you to export to PSD, and all of the essential export file formats are there, but don't offer file options. The autosave feature in ArtRage is handy, so I'd keep that enabled. Up next, we'll look at the paper and canvas textures. ArtRage has texture properties and a good selection of textures. There is a dynamic paper or canvas texture overlay that you can modify at any time. This is a proper canvas texture because it always blends with your paint rather than being covered when you paint on it. Your paint even interacts with the texture overlay in a natural way. There is some texture randomization going on. You can add custom papers and textures. And ArtRage features some great impasto and surface lighting controls 
to change the lighting on your canvas and paint forms. Next are the guide and grid features. ArtRage has some pretty good perspective guides. There are also additional ruler guides, symmetry painting guides, and dynamic grids. Let's see how the panels and palette features score. The reference image panel in ArtRage is good. I don't tend to rotate my reference images, so I think I prefer a more rigid reference palette, but this is cool too. There is a toolbox you can add brushes to, which sort of counts as a custom palette, but it's not very customizable. Aside from the toolbox or scripts, you can't really create custom shortcut palettes. There are some good color picker customization options. And while there aren't a lot of advanced color modes, you can choose real color blending, which will give you a more natural result when you blend and overlap colors. For example, yellow and blue will make green instead of gray. If you're printing, you'll have to do your CMYK color proofing in a different app. ArtRage has some really basic color swatches. For an app with such an emphasis on oils, I'm surprised that you cannot load multiple colors on your brush. ArtRage is one of the few applications that will offer you color harmonies. You can enable this in the color picker. And there is some color variability you can apply, but the controls are fairly limited. We should probably talk about the canvas features next. The new canvas dialog is good. The max canvas size in ArtRage is good at 32,500 pixels. The canvas presets are good, and you can adequately resize your image, resize the canvas, and crop. You can even flip the canvas. ArtRage does not offer color profile options. Multi-monitor support is good, and I had to dock some points because there isn't a grayscale preview mode. Up next is the interface. The visual appearance and organization of ArtRage is good. It's definitely a mobile app first and foremost, but it's one of the easiest mobile apps to operate on a desktop. I spent a lot of time using ArtRage on the iPad, and it was cool that I could bring my work into the desktop version and the UI and features were identical. Overall, it's a clean design with graphics that are easy on the eyes. I like the idea of the wedge-shaped menu that holds the brushes and tools. It's a very efficient use of space. However, I personally just want a standard rectangular palette for my brushes since I don't like them to be in the bottom corner of the desktop. The ease of use of the ArtRage interface is okay. I know this app is not designed for the desktop, but I find it tedious to navigate through the nested brushes, tools, and controls. Many things require too many clicks to access. They do throw desktop users a bone now and then. For example, I can dock palettes, but the docking controls aren't very good. The default UI is quite minimal, so bonus points for that. Although it's not as customizable as I'd like, I'd say ArtRage does a good job of allowing you to customize the interface and palettes. You can export and import brushes, but unfortunately not the layout. There are a good amount of preferences. ArtRage is one of the few apps that has a collaborative painting feature built in. I haven't tried it myself, so let me know in the comments what you think. I'd say the number of features in ArtRage is okay. There just aren't a lot of extras and I find myself missing some things. I'll test ArtRage with my drawing tablet. Pen pressure in ArtRage doesn't feel as responsive as other art apps I've tried. It's not unusable with the tablet, but perhaps a bit too optimized for mobile devices that are not pressure sensitive. The pen tilt expression didn't perform consistently. Sometimes it worked, sometimes not. ArtRage is one of the few apps that can support the rotation expression. I don't know what to say about multi-touch input, it's very touchy. You can try finger painting and blending, but you'll probably just end up making a bunch of accidental marks if you're trying to navigate with touch. You cannot use the pen eraser as a brush or blender, but oddly enough, ArtRage is one of the rare apps that can support independent pen settings. There are even dedicated controls for it. Sometimes these controls stopped working. I'm not sure if that's related to the pressure and tilt issues I was having. No drips in ArtRage, so no accelerometer support either. Last up are the tools. ArtRage has some good selection tools and even a selection brush. The text tool is okay, I've seen better. The paint bucket tool is good with gap detection. There's also a retro slow motion slider you can use to see where a fill is escaping the line art. Or you young folks can use it to appreciate how in the 90s we had to wait 60 seconds every time we wanted to fill something. The gradient tool is good. And there are some nice pattern creation tools. No vector tools or brushes to speak of in ArtRage. Not counting selections, there aren't any shape tools. There are some good essential effects you can apply. No comic panel tools. There is a rudimentary time-lapse recording feature, but it's basically just a script that plays back each stroke and you cannot render to video. And finally, no animation tools to be found in ArtRage. Let's add everything up to see how ArtRage scores. 
Heart Rage earns an objective score of 198 out of 273 possible points. If you want to know how this software ranks compared to other art apps, check out my Top 7 Digital Art Apps video. That's all for my review of Art Rage. For more digital art reviews and tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.